This is the final video on the 1964 Montgomery Ward Color Roundy, basically RCA CTC 15. In this video we get to the bottom of the color and do the convergence and all the setup and go through the rest of the diagnostic and repair procedure and get the set working. With that said, this set needs a new home. So if you're interested in this or you need a good working CTC 15 chassis, the thing does need a few items to, to really dial it in. The cabinet needs to be painted, it needs a cataract done, and it could use new filters and some other little minor stuff, but it's solid besides that. So if you're interested in this and you could use this, uh, I'd really like to find it a good loving home with someone who would use it and enjoy it. So let me know and enjoy the video. We really kind of get into it here. 1964 Montgomery Ward Color Part 2 or Part 3, however you want to look at it. In the first video we just looked at the TV. The second video we diagnosed a bad uh, resistor in the power supply 1.4K at 18 watts. I was looking through my stash of RCA parts and I actually had two OEM 1.4K at 18 watts and this is the SAMS for CTC 15 and it is 100% identical to the SAMS for the Montgomery Ward. So I'm gonna just go with that this is a CTC 15 that was rebranded, probably made by RCA, rebranded for Montgomery Ward. I also found it interesting that on this highly used, worn out CTC 15 SAMS photo fact, that someone had marked with a pin there R204, that's the eight, that's the 1.4K resistor that was open. So it must have been a high problematic failure rate part. When we left off, the color demodulation wasn't working and the screen controls weren't adjusting the proper color. Red was adjusting green. I really couldn't get anything to bring up red. Um, this bulb was getting very hot. This bulb was not. Today I just want to go through and quickly check the voltages on both of those because if one of those is screwed up or the circuitry around it, it could cause this. I photocopied that section of the SAM so I can write on it just for quick reference. So we're just going to go through and check the voltages on these three amp output tubes. And one of these is used as the uh, horizontal blanking amp too. We're more interested in this circuitry right here that I'm sweeping that drives the CRT. One thing I will say about that resistor is it does get hot. So we have our test adapter socket in there and we're going to be using this thing just for the entertainment value and it's on the 300 volt scale so I'm on pin one it should read 160 volts it's pretty close as I said pin one should be 160 volts that's pretty close pin two says 2.5 volts I forgot with these analog meters you have to constantly zero them out. And that looks like it's running negative. Uh, pin. No, it says 2.5 volts and it's sitting negative. Let's see. Pin 3 should be 7.5 volts. And that's the cathode. Ten, so that's 
5 volts, 5.5 volts. Okay, you know what, this is cute, but it's a pain in the ass. Pretty close though, 5.53. Yeah, takes some time to read it, but it's pretty close. So why is that? That's a little low, and why is this? Negative. Why is that negative when it says it should be 2.5 volts here? And then this should be 160. It's a little high. Okay, let's do the other section of the tube. Okay, pin 6 is 154 volts. Okay. Pin 7 is negative 3 volts. I wonder if this is a typo on the SAMs. And pin 8, which is the other cathode, is 5 volts. So they're calling for positive 2.5 and 7.5 volts here. I wonder why. I wonder why those are negative. I don't know. Is the SAMs accurate? Maybe I need to see if I have the factory manual on this thing. Now I'm checking the voltages on the back of the CRT, specifically the screens. And the screens here are three at the bottom, the 820 volt range ones. And I've got some interesting interaction here, which I also had in the last video. So this is measuring the, uh, let me see, the blue screen. And I'm going to turn the blue screen pot all the way down. I'm going to turn the red screen pot all the way down. I turn the red screen pot all the way up. I turn the blue screen pot all the way up. I'm going to turn the red screen pot all the way down. Now this is turning the green from one end to the other. So what is this interaction between blue and red? All right, keep in mind I'm on the thousand volt scale. So this is the green screen measuring on the back of the CRT. And the red has an effect on it too. The blue has no effect on it. That's green down, red up, red down red up. Why is the red interacting with... This is measuring the red on the back of the tube. It's red down, red up. Green down, green up, blue down, blue up. Red down, green up, green down, blue up, blue down. So the red is affecting the other two colors, but the other two colors are not affecting the red. Now I'm on the blue, if I could stay on it there. I'm on the blue with the CRT unplugged. So I just got the meter stuck in the socket. So red, that's turning red, and red is affecting it unplugged from the CRT. So when I turn blue down, turning red up brings blue down even more. Okay, so with that said, with that logic, capacitor 44 right there, C44 has got to be leaking. Yeah, I'm back looking at these three again, which I initially started looking at. We know we got a bad capacitor over here, but I'm looking at these three. And this one that's a, supposed to be 170 is reading 205. And these are both reading high. And that comes back to this tube here, which is the one that's getting hot. So maybe the one that's 
getting hot is the one I should be suspicious of, not the one that's not getting hot, something like that. Yeah, it's reading 204 volts. And that, that seems excessively high, 35 volts. That seems a little high, especially since the B plus is low and it seems to be dropping, which would indicate that the filter capacitors are failing. Uh, it's 384 and it should be 400. So the B plus is a little bit low. So back to these negative voltages and this one's negative 4.3 and the schematic calls for positive 1.5. And of course, if that goes negative, it's going to cut the tube off. The tube isn't going to conduct. And you're going to have the higher plate voltage, which is going to turn out the higher voltage here. But why are all of these negative? What's, what's causing that? And actually, the picture tube bias switch does affect this. So if I flip the picture tube bias up, to minimum, which is what a brand new set would be at, it drops down to about where it should be. I wonder what's going on right here. Did someone replace the CRT socket? I mean, these, these look like splices. What's going on with this? All right, so we got a leaky capacitor on the back. That capacitor is on the back of the uh, pot, the red pot there. So um, these color issues are tough to figure out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up a few things from the electronics store, and I guess we'll pull the chassis and see if we can. Get go put the vector scope on this next and take a look at it and see why it's not demodulating correctly or at all. I'm pulling the chassis out of the uh, Wells Gardener or whatever this thing is and just wondering what the hell is this thing? Is this a freaking wasp nest? Is that what this is? It uses a new Vista. If this is a RCA clone, it it's a real good clone. I mean, they really did a good job at... And I have an actual CTC-15 chassis, I think spare chassis, somewhere. I should dig it out and we'll do a side-by-side. Because -side. this thing, they did a real good job. So we have a few things to look at here. First of all, the 1400 ohm resistor and this disk capacitor right here that's on the back of the red. So okay, here's the 1400 ohm resistor. And somebody commented that, yeah, the leads rust on these. The leads get all corroded from the heat. You can see that's definitely the case here. What's going on there? Well, Maybe that's why it didn't work, because the, uh, get the appropriate tool, baked. Easy bake oven television set. So I wonder that the Wow, it's so it's so baked. The uh, terminal strip is actually like fatigued. Hello, we have exciting news through new standard.
standards, you are now entitled to receive medical grade braces at no charge. That's correct. If you are suffering from chronic pain, press 1 now to get additional information on how to get your medical grade brace delivered to your house. If you would like to be placed on the do not call list, press 9 now. Thank you for calling. If you would like to be added to our do not call list, press 5. Now otherwise to speak to a specialist, press 7. I, I noticed they put in a... Oh. You have pressed an incorrect key. Please try again. Thank you for calling. If you... I noticed they added an extra layer. Very important to us. Please stay on the line and you'll be transferred to the next available agent. An extra layer of security. Hey, Prime Clean Services, with a pleasure of speaking with. Hi, uh, this is Dragon. And how are you doing today? Good. What's happening? Okay. Hello? Do you copy? So, yeah, this disk capacitor here, um, I think is leaking. It's a VDR. That one looks like it's been getting hot, too. No real, uh... It's still going here. Let's call it back. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call can now be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. Announcement for four. Of course not. Have we wasted enough time? Look at how these all look heat baked in the middle too. You know, I, I really want to say this is a low hour set. Um, I don't know why I want to say that, but it doesn't, because the original CRT is not totally 100% baked out, but also it's not, it's like that was running hot and it kind of fatigued the circuit board above it. Ooh, RCA. So maybe it's not a clone. Anyway, uh, let's get the meter on this. Oh, the resistor is not open. So that's a good deal. Just replace this with a piece of Teflon wire and it'll never fail again. Not that the set will ever be used that much, but you never know. Might as well try and do it right. So how are our solder stakes? So I cut one side of this disk capacitor on the red screen control out of circuit and I'm just measuring it with the ohm meter and it's measuring one meg. So how's that for leakage? And that is a disk capacitor. So this is why troubleshooting is relevant versus just recapping because anyone recapping would not have changed that capacitor. They would have changed this one. That's about it. I mean, un unless you were on a Facebook group, then you would change all of these. Except the disk capacitors, but well, I shouldn't do this because now everybody's going to be changing every disk capacitor and everything rather than troubleshooting it, and that's not my goal here. My goal is learn how to troubleshoot and diagnose, and we can see that the center lead of this pot 
goes to red and white, which only goes to the CRT. So the only way that this could be interacting with the other two is either a problem on that red and white lead or that capacitor leaking. So the capacitor is bad. That's a leaky disc capacitor. And they do go bad in high voltage areas mostly, but disc capacitors do go bad. Look at how this thing gets so hot it actually caused like the coating or the anodizing or whatever to burn off the chassis. And you know it's right under the flyback cage too so I think if I was you know if I was serious about this TV I'd be tempted to move it maybe up on top over here and get that heat you know away from the flyback and out from under the chassis no reason to have all that heat build up under here I don't know why they did that probably for convenience or some weird safety thing or whatever but for me I'd rather have it up on top where it it could you know properly ventilate I'm not gonna do that with this alright this is fixed and I actually moved it down one on the terminal strip because this terminal strip is so bad there are two extras well one unused here I guess the other ones ground so I just extended the wire I replaced this disc capacitor and I touched up a few solders on this board all in all it looks decent it doesn't look extremely high hour I mean it looks it's been used there's some discoloration from heat, but it's not extreme. So we still have to troubleshoot why this board is not demodulating the color. I'm not really a big fan of just doing like bulk tube testing, but since it's cold and rainy outside, and it has been for weeks and it probably will be forever, I'm gonna do that and I'll start with the elusive 6GH8 maybe not elusive notorious is probably the word I'll start with this guy and I'm gonna be testing him on the TC 162 I like this meter it's simple it's fast it's very worn out but you know what whatever I will Turn the camera on if I get something wrong. I'm not going to sit here and test 15 tubes on camera. That would piss a lot of people off. So I will dial you guys back up if, uh, if I find something worth looking at. This is a vector scope. And I just want to say this. As a piece of diagnostic equipment, yes. As a piece of alignment equipment, no. And I'm going to use it to aid with the diagnosis of the Wells Gardner, or I'm sorry, RCA. It does not appear to be a Wells Gardner Montgomery Ward Airline color television set. And I'm just using this little Panasonic here to, to check the operation of the um, colored bar generator in this thing because I haven't used it in so long and the RCA is just picking it up out of the air you can see its idea of uh, crosshatch is pretty laughable look at how far the convergence is on this now I realize it's kind of bright up here but anyway if I put that there this is what the color demodulation looks like on the RCA and this is that's turning the fine tuning on the RCA and I know I got it the uh, thing adjusted pretty well because of the um, way it looked on the Panasonic so this is turning the color down or maybe that's the tint no that's got to be the tint Yeah, a little door fell off. So this is the color level. 
this is the tent. Now what this should be, this should be a nice beautiful flower with one petal touching each one of these. So this is blue, if I remember right, this is blue and this is green down here. You can see there's no red whatsoever. The red is just flat lining. So yeah, this looks like absolute trash. Now what this allows me to do is see if the color demodulation is working regardless of the purity or the convergence or the degaussing. I know it needs all of that. It needs to be degaussed and then it needs the color and the purity set up. All that alignment basic CRT neck setup stuff. But this, regardless of any of that, will show us if the demodulation is working and it's not. What you see there is total trash. I forgot to mention I tested all these tubes and they all test excellent and I just substituted the 6GH8 and it made no difference. So yeah, there's just... it looks like trash. The whole top of it's missing. It's like a flower that you cut half of it off with a pair of scissors. The problem has to be in this section right here. I flipped these two tubes, it made no difference. It can't be back here. It has to be something here because this is kind of a differential setup, a phasing thing. So uh, I believe that that is with I believe that that is with color bars and that is without. So I'm going to take a look at at these three on the scope see if one of them's not driving a signal okay so there's what the red looks like without the color bars if I turn the color bars up cut it out if I turn the color bars up let me see so there it is with the color bars that's the red lead going to the CRT. Okay, here's green. So I believe that's green. I better double check these replacement CRT socket. But anyway, you can see there's no color information getting through that one. Okay, here's blue. I think this is supposed to look more like a staircase. Actually, that's red. This is blue right here and this is green see how green is I believe the phase is inverted on green so that's why the spikes the information's below instead of above so if you look at there's so many of these damn things. If you look at that, I switched the two 6GU7s around. That didn't change anything. And I checked the signal on both sides of C145, and it looks good. Uh, it's kind of bizarre. You know, these, these problems can be real tough to sort out, and I don't... I don't rehearse or do much editing on these videos, so, you know, I tend to look a little bit green and stupid sometimes, and I'm fine with that because, of course, this is not my day job. Um, this is a hobby, and these color sets, everyone has a little bit different of a problem, and they can be very easy or very difficult to sort out. And this color demodulation deal is a, a bit hard to sort out. And I, uh, I would have to probably brush up on how this all works so that I don't look stupid. Um, I know it's a phase differential deal between uh, blue and red and then the green. So I forget exactly how it goes. I'm sure somebody here will just automatically know, but I don't remember. Blue and red are 90 degrees out of phase or 180 degrees and then 
uh, green is the sum or the division of that. I, I don't remember. Well, uh, this is a real trip. I've kind of checked everything and it looks like it's all everything's passing a signal. I have a CTC 25 in the house which is basically the same circuit. Uh, I'm going to hook this stuff up to that and because it has perfect color and do a little bit of a comparison, a little cheating. Um, it's got to almost be a capacitor. It still fascinates me that the tube on the left there, the 6GU7, is not even hardly hot and the one on the right is very warm and the two plate resistors on the one on the left are cool and on the right they're hot. I'm still trying to figure out what that's about. Alright, I took a look at the CTC25 with this thing and it had a perfect flower and I took a look at the scope patterns and the scope patterns eh, it's hard to tell because it's all a phase angle thing and I you know without doing dual trace and really knowing what I'm looking at and being familiar with this so I'm gonna do something which I recommend against which is I'm gonna tweak on the cores a little bit I'm just not seeing anything wrong here um, you know, and I don't think on these that the cores can really affect the phasing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I'm, I, I put a mark on my thing here. I'm going to tweak on these and I'm going to see what, how it affects this thing. Again, not recommended. Okay, the first one I'm going to tweak on is that one. No, it's turning these doesn't affect anything unless there's some major bandpass issue in the IF. Uh, this is a good one. I pulled the third IF out and I'm using the composite video out of this uh, electroscope, uh, whatever this thing is. And. Um, bypassing the IF and everything tuner IF I'm still getting come on focus I'm still getting the same basic uh, shape even though it's really weak because the output of this is nowhere near as strong as a tube needs so it, the problem is in this video detector board and that's really pronounced by the temperature of that tube being cool Okay, well this has just gone totally bogus because I could swear earlier in this clip we uh, checked the voltages on this thing and it was high and now it's like non-existent. On, on this plate resistor I have one volt and on the other plate resistor I have 80 volts and I'm supposed to have 400 on both of them but yet I still have 400 on this one over here okay well this is bizarre I know that these circuit boards have a lot of problems with solders and corrosion and the stakes and the tube sockets and but I checked all that uh, when I had this thing out and, and then, I mean now I don't have voltage on these plate resistors so uh, I have 80 volts on one I have one volt on the other well of course it's not gonna demodulate so I don't understand I guess I'm gonna have to pull it back out something must have cracked on the circuit board I see a green corrode doodle here It's right there, see it? A little green corrode doodle. And that looks like the wire that goes from over there to over there. Why don't I clean the chassis? Because it annoys everybody and I like to annoy everybody. Yeah, clean the chassis on something this fragile. Corrode doodle. 
Yeah, I just touched that wire and it broke clean off. Yeah, you know what's weird about this? This wasn't like that in the beginning of this video. And so I, I and the color sucked in the beginning of the video. So is this like a secondary problem that occurred, you know, now? I don't get it. Right, so I just replaced the jumper wire on the bottom there. You can see they actually have holes drilled uh, for those three resistors to, to vent them. And it says uh, RCA again on the board here. And I notice this set's all wire wrapped. I, I don't believe this is Wells Gardner. I think this is RCA. Why would it say RCA on the boards? Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know what happened there. I, I, I could swear that voltage was there at the beginning of the video. I measured it with the analog meter, uh, you know, what's going on here. Oh, nice, look at that. Big difference. Wow. Okay, so here we go. Like I said, as a diagnostic tool, not as an alignment tool. So yeah, I guess that wire corroded off there while I was working on it. So this is turning the color level up and down. <laughs> you can see it really blows out now. Uh, this is turning the tint. So look at this. This this thing almost... Let me see that. This thing almost lines up spot on. Look at that. This thing is dead on. This is perfect. But, still don't have any colors on the screen. So it's got to be going on here is the, uh, the purity and all of that has just got to be so far off that it's just all blending together. So what I need to do first is I need to degauss this thing, then I need to do a basic setup on it. So purity, convergence, but the color demodulation is working. That is the color information going into the CRT. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, we've been chasing our tail and you know I could edit these videos to make myself look good. I could just cut all this out and and just start right here and hook it up and say, yep, it all looks good. But I'm not going to do that because this is not refined, make me look good. This is real world repair. And this is the type of stuff you run into with these things. I mean, it's only, what, 60 years old? Earlier in the video with the analog meter, we checked these voltages here and they were all a little high. And that's how I know that that wire was not corroded open because that voltage comes up through this 27K resistor and the wire was corroded basically right here going to two of these. So I know that that wire was not corroded before we took the chassis out and fixed the other issues. The capacitor and the big resistor being corroded. You know, I kind of like that dusty tube look, you know, it makes me think about when I was a kid and I'd look in the back of the TV and I'd see these dusty bulbs glowing and, you know, just, just make me want to start singing a Debbie Boone song called You Light Up My Life. Alright, I found the degaussing coil, so let's just do this. I'm kind of over this TV. Um... 
I dropped the resolution of the camera way down the bit rate so it's probably gonna have some artifacts in it but this is you know this this takes a while to do a setup so um, I usually like to put the degaussing coil on the uh, um, Variac, but here we go. Testicle cancer, take one. Oh, yeah. can feel the damn thing buzzing and getting hot. So Did that affected any? Try it again. The, the ticket is with this is to move in slowly and move away slowly that way you don't just cut it off because if you just cut it off you'd leave the magnetic polarity of wherever the sine wave was so you just gotta sure it's real good to get this thing near the magnet good thing it's not uh, using magnetic tape all right get the uh, generator beautiful isn't it it's a real award winner right there I hope I'm in focus uh, I'm in manual focus to keep it from hunting so let's do uh... some color bars there aren't there It's tint. Let's not worry about color right now. Though. We'll turn that off. See, at night we get the helicopters. We don't get the airplanes. Look at that. It's okay. Okay, raster. Let's see how the colors are working. So Turn all the screens down. That's red. That's green. That's blue. Turn them all up. Pull the yoke back. You know what? This thing is so whacked out. You pull the yoke back, you should be able to get the damn 
colors to do my best here. This is Clarko twinkulating the uh, purity magnets. For I have all the screens turned down except the red. And this is Clinko twinkulating the to try and get the most red screen and that looks pretty good right there. a little blue here and a little yellow there. Uh, let me see something. That's green. That's blue. Let's try and make it... Where have my CRT bias at? Pretty nice, pretty gray. Okay. What the hell? Blue lateral magnet. magnets what moves it up and down, right? Okay, um, red, let me see, what does this do? There we go. Why am I background red right now? Okay, I need to bring my other two screens up a little bit. still low. So I believe what you do, you pull the things out, you turn them over. You can pull those uh, magnet straw things out and turn them over.
<laughs> Look at that. Imagine that. Turn that off. Still a little bit too. Red is about perfect with the damn thing out of it. There we go, now you can see red is way off there. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn blue off, and I'm going to just converge red and green. Don't move. Because you're moving red and green on a diagonal plane and then you have total control over blue. So is that red and green or converged? Not really. Now we got blue off to one side. So let me see. I think I just broke the blue lateral magnet. Whoever designed this, I 
Wow, that's pretty good. Not at the bottom. The red is a little low. I um, wonder if we could bend it at the bottom. Top. You know what? It's pretty damn close. I'm going to just leave it alone. I'm going to screw it up. Look at how good that looks. Wait a sec, is it, isn't it supposed to be... Aren't color bars supposed to be blue in the middle? Why am I... Why am I going totally dumb on this? I know this side's green. Why does this seem upside down? What did I do? Did I reverse two of the wires on the yoke? White should be on that side. I must have reversed two of the wires on the yoke. See if this changes it. See what that does. Yeah, that did real good. No, that didn't do it. Oh, I reversed the I reversed the two on the top. Okay, so let me reverse those two back and then let me reverse the two on the bottom back. Now it should be right. Cheater cords starting to wear out. Come on, baby. You can do it. 
You can do it. Talk to me. There we go. That's right. Except it's brown. I don't know what that's about. So this should be dark blue, red, purple, green, blue, yellow, white. Yellow is kind of weak. All the colors are kind of weak. Let's see if we can make happy. Let's make the, uh, there we go. Except this down here should be blue. I know I've been moving this around. I hope I still have that in frame. So that that turning red is probably just it distorting because the CRT is worn out, but there it is. not real good but you know what it's by looking at it on the vector scope we know it's a CRT because the decoding of the TV is perfect I mean, if this this thing had a good CRT this would have an absolutely brilliant picture I mean it would be an incredibly bright uh, picture Do I dare try and adjust the focus and dial that in a little bit? Nah, it doesn't look like it wants that to happen. Okay. So if I put it on raster, I can, so that's blue, that's red, it's green, red, blue, or that's green, that's blue. Same thing here, you can turn the individual colors on and off. And you can see they kind of interact with each other. They really shouldn't do that, but it's what it is. It's an old CRT. Um, it looks good, though. That looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'll get the converter box out here and we'll watch some TV. You know, this thing, put the volume knob back on here. Visit us at Jamboree 73 to truly experience the Fletcher Jones difference. Fletcher Jones Motor Cars, Newport Beach. Do you want another truck or a truck like no other? One that makes people say, they put what in that truck? One that has capabilities you can't find in other trucks. And ushers in a whole new age. The all new Ram 1500. Why does this thing got such a. The deals like no other. Come in now during Ram Truck Month. Crappy picture. During Ram Truck Month, well qualified returning lessees will go mileage lease on the 2019 Ram 1500 for $249 a month. This recon wheel is two times the spinning and. There we go. This is copyright.
Who has news on right now? Look at how soft and... This investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. There was no collusion. There was no oh, obstruction. The hate no mail is going to start. A Justice Department official tells CBS News Mueller's report won't be released next week when the president travels to Vietnam for his second summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. But his former lawyer Michael Cohen is scheduled to testify before Congress on the same days as the talks. Once the special counsel's report is finished, it will be up to Attorney General William Barr to decide if it should be public. Democrats say it should. The president says he has not talked to Barr about it, but looks forward to seeing the report. In Washington, Nicole Killian, KCAL 9 News. R. Kelly says he can't come up with the money for his million-dollar bond, so he is still in jail tonight. Kelly was arrested on charges of sexual abuse, and prosecutors say some of the alleged victims are underage girls. Correspondent Drika Duncan has the latest on the case and a warning. Some of the details outlined by investigators are graphic. In graphic detail, State Attorney Kim Fox described the allegations involving four women who say they were sexually abused by three-time Grammy winner and R&B singer R. Kelly. One of the cases involved a 24-year-old who says she had an appointment to braid Kelly's hair back in 2003. Robert Kelly grabbed the victim by the head and tried to force her mouth onto his exposed penis and the semen was identified on the shirt. The male DNA identified in quality. Nothing but the finest. Now it looks like there's a little bit too much green. The ponies at the mall. <laughs> Kidding. His owners bought him at an auction to use as a trail horse, but Neil's not too interested in being ridden. You think you have a couple minutes to give me a hand? Uh, sorry, I got a phone meeting with my student advisor right now, but maybe later. So you've uh, you've made a decision about university? Well, I missed the first few classes, but they pull down on the green a little bit. Good. I'm sure you'll have no problem catching up. Crap, this could be copyright. I always think about copyright. The bargain center? Susan, you almost had more than you could handle. Yes, Jim. When I was living in England, I have uh, a friend who has a very old house. And when I visited him, I slept in the same bed that Handel slept in when he was writing the Messiah. Oh. Alone. That's <laughs> more than you could handle. But I was alone. Right. Okay. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you here, Dory. You do good deeds for the Boy Scouts. Yeah, Jim, my good deed is raising money for Scouts so they can do their good deeds. Well, that sounds like good work. Nice to have you here as well, sir. $20 starts all three players off, and the player with the most money at the end of the show is the champion. Gets to do some great shopping. Susan and Dory, don't this have to tell you, Jim's old. a tough champion. Let's get started with this. What was the famous nickname of American composer Edward Kennedy Ellington? Susan. Duke. Did you sleep in his or red bedroom? Oh, yeah. Duke it is. Five dollars. <laughs> I heard her. I love my digital TV. I need to rescan this thing. They just redid a bunch of our channels out here. Dude. The only statement released by the Department of Defense so far says the National Emergency Declaration authorizes the Secretary of Defense to determine whether border barriers are necessary. I hope it's a wake-up call for all Americans that this administration that purports to be all about law and order is in fact lawless. 
Mariana Trevino Wright is the executive director of the National Butterfly Center, a facility that could lose about 70 acres of land. A lawsuit they filed back in 2017 to stop the wall was recently dismissed. Is there a fear that, that this might be what's in store for other landowners? I think it's a very real possibility. Alvarez's mother, who lives right next door, is in hospice care for cancer. So for this family, there's no other choice but to fight. Does it feel like a David and Goliath? Good greens, good reds. It does, because I'm just an average citizen that does not have... It's not too bad. It's kind of soft. ...that Mr. Trump has. It is very hard. The cataract crap really kind of brings it down a little bit, too. that I know for a fact I am going to lose, and that is the one with my mother. The other one, there is hope. There is hope for tomorrow. If we go with the laws of the United States... We have a chance. Mireya Villarreal in South Texas. Well, the snow and the storms are gone tonight, but the cold is still sticking around. A live look at Long Beach this evening. Beautiful night, but definitely chilly out there. KCAL 9 meteorologist Amber Lee here with a look at the forecast. Hi, Amber. Hi, Sarah. Temperature-wise, we are still below average for this time of year, but we're slowly going to be warming up. So our overnight low is not quite as cold as the last few nights, but still pretty chilly outside. 62 came in with our high today for downtown LA. Normally, we should be in the upper 60s. So here's a look at our Queen Mary as we were talking about in Long Beach or all right I, I think I'm done I think I can wrap this thing so the thing is is these things have the potential to have a really really good picture and it, I would prefer CTC 16 myself because it has the automatic degaussing and it's a little bit more updated than this but these things should really produce a very good color picture. The colors on these, when they're the CRT is strong, they're super bright colors. And um, yeah. Oh, the rare earth phosphor. I was talking to my friend who works at the mine. Is europium oxide? That's the red rare earth phosphor. Final approach just outside of Houston, Texas. Chris Van Cleve has the latest. The National Transportation Safety Board is sending a go team of investigators to Texas to try to piece together why this Atlas Air Boeing 767 cargo plane crashed a little bit before 1 p.m. local time here in Texas. These are some of the first pictures out of the crash scene. We can see in the video wreckage in shallow water in Trinity Bay outside of Houston. We know the plane took off from Miami International Airport bound for Houston Bush. There was rain in the area when air traffic control lost contact with the plane. Obviously, a priority for the investigation will be to recover the black boxes. That will be a very high priority for us. We understand that the aircraft is in water that is not, not very deep, so hopefully that will be in our favor. 